Okay, let's take a look at some sine curves. Alright, first we'll take a look at the formula. Y equals A sine of BX minus C and plus D on the outside. Where amplitude is the absolute value of A and the period is 2 pi over B. B is always the number that's in front of X. Phase shift is opposite of C over B and the vertical shift is the D on the outside. Okay, let's take a look at an example here. Most basic sine curve is Y equals the sine of X. All right, there is no number in front of sine, so the amplitude is 1. There is no number in front of X, so 2 pi over 1 is just 2 pi. Phase shift in this problem, there is none. And there is no vertical shift, so... When I start to graph sine curves, the first thing I do is I look for the starting point. The starting point is usually your phase shift, or, you know, if there is no phase shift, it's just zero. To get your ending point, you take the starting point, and you add the period to it, and you get 2 pi in this case. And then you find the middle of the two points by adding them together and multiplying by a half. And in this case, it's just pi. Okay, when graphing a sine curve, the first thing you want to do is have the starting, middle, and ending points is plot a point on your zero axis. Okay? In this case, let me, let me highlight those for you. We have zero, pi, and two pi. As you can see, they're at our zero axis. Between our starting point and our middle point, the sine curve least reaches a max at its amplitude, and between the middle and the ending point, the sine curve reaches a minimum at its amplitude. Let me highlight those for you a little bit. There you go, and we connect them, and we get an oscillating sine curve, and you can see there's one period of a sine curve between 0 and 2 pi, and it continues. You can also see another period between negative 2 pi and 0 for this function. Okay. Let's look at another. All right, this time we got y equals negative 3 sine of 2x plus pi. All right, the negative in front really is not going to affect anything until we graph it because the amplitude is the absolute value of a, which in this case is 3. All right, period again is 2 pi over b, and in this case you can see our b right here is 2, so 2 pi over 2 is just pi. All right, phase shift is the opposite of the inside over b, so it's negative of the pi divided by 2. And our vertical shift is none. All right. When starting it, you get your starting point, which again I told you in the previous problem was the phase shift. And then we get our ending point by adding the period to it. So negative pi over 2 plus pi is just pi over 2. And then we need a middle point, and you get that by adding them together and then multiplying by half or dividing by 2, whatever you're more comfortable with. Okay, let's take a look now. We plot on our zero axis the starting, middle, and ending points. As you can see right here, we have a starting, our middle, and our ending point all on the zero line. And then, like I told you, halfway between the starting and the middle point, you know, on a normal sine curve, you'd reach a max. But since this is a negative sine curve, we're going to reach a minimum point. And then we're going to reach our max between our middle and our ending point, as you can see here. And then again, we connect them, and it's an oscillating curve. And you can see our one period right here between negative pi over 2, and pi over 2. All right, last example we're going to look at today. We have y equals 2 sine of x over 2 plus 3 pi over 2, and then minus 3 on the outside. We'll first pull out our period. Our period is just 2 in this case. Okay, it's a positive sine curve, so we're going to be going max, then min. All right. Period is 2 pi over b, and then if you look at this, it's x over 2, so it actually looks like 1 half x. And 2 pi divided by 1 half, you know, we multiply by the reciprocal, reciprocal and we would get 4 pi. Phase shift in this case is the opposite of the C, so negative 3 pi over 2 divided by 1 half, or multiply by 2, and then we're going to get negative 3 pi. And then we have a vertical shift, which is negative 3, and that's going to be basically our new zero line is going to be at y equals negative 3. So when we start to graph, when I say zero line, that's what I'm referring to, the vertical shift. Starting point, again, is your phase shift. To get our ending point, we add the period to it, and negative 3 pi plus 4 pi is just pi. And then we need to get a middle point, so we add them together and divide by 2, or multiply by 1 half, whatever you're more comfortable with. 
And then again, we have a sine curve, so we're going to plot on our zero line, our starting, our middle, and our ending points. Let me highlight those a little. There we go. And then, since we have a positive sine curve, halfway between we're going to reach a max, and halfway between our middle and our ending point, we reach a min. Highlight them. There you go. And then we connect the graph, and as you can see here, we have the same oscillating curve, but now it's shifted down to negative 3 as our zero line. Okay.